There are many visual indicators that your soil system has broken down or that the soil gut microbiome is dysfunctional. Uh, one of those visual clues is the presence of thatch. So what thatch is, is the buildup of undecomposed material. So this could be um, plant litter, this could be plant roots, and you'll actually see this thatch forming over time. I've been on some uh, soil environments where people have had seven inches of thatch. That becomes a huge problem because roots won't penetrate through. You're not going to get um, nutrient access. You're going to see water repellency in these circumstances as well. Certainly not ideal. And if you look at the images here, this is from um, Randy Booker's place at Otter Creek. And when they began their journey, you know, they've got around just under two inches of that you can see building up under the soil in 2009. In 2015, you can see how that thatch is starting to become incorporated. We're seeing lovely dark brown materials moving through that profile. And in 2021, you can see that there's no thatch material in there whatsoever. So it's a critical part to um, soil health and what we're doing above ground and how that influences below ground. It costs us something as well as if, if thatch is present in your environment, then you're gonna find that your water use efficiencies go right down you're going to end up needing more pesticides, fungicides, herbicides, and water as well. So how do we kickstart that whole system? We need air to be present in these environments. So many of you will already be using an aerator, but looking at how do we introduce air down into that system? Is there infiltration of water right through there? Do you have sufficient energy in the form of sugars? So it's really plant photosynthesis that drives the energy for the microbes to then break that unbroken down material. And what we find is if you have a low um, nutrient density, low sugars in this space, then this slows that whole digestive system down. So I think of thatch a little bit like constipated soils in terms of all of that process is just basically slowed until nothing's moving through. We also need a little bit of calcium and a little bioavailable phosphorus to just help stimulate microbiology and get that material broken down. Some of the management strategies I've seen are there are commercial thatch busters, but even things like a little bit of molasses and humic acid down with your aerators just to help kickstart that decomposition. One of the other visual indicators that we might see that your system's not working as well as it could is what's happening with your water cycle. All right, and our job as good land managers and stewards is really to capture every single drop of water. Do we see that water moving very slowly through that profile? Do you see porosity so that water can move through and then work like a sponge? So soil organic matter and biology all hold on to water and enable that water to then be available to the plant. And then we're gonna see healthy ecosystems, all right? And what we find is most systems are more bacterially dominated. We start to see water repellency. Your water use efficiencies go right down. We see a lot of runoff and nutrient and pesticide losses to the environment. So our job really is to look at how do we catch every single drop of moisture that lands on the property and then slowly release that over time and also to recharge our aquifers. So water repellency in itself is created by two different factors. One of them might be the byproducts of volatile organic compounds. Um, so these are organic materials, perhaps you have eucalyptus, you have different tree materials, maybe you're using some kind of mulch or compost that's not in really good shape. So Poor quality compost can also create these volatile organic compounds. And what happens is they will create this layer around um, soil particles. And they can also move down through that profile and create these pans of impervious layers where water just won't move, right? They can also be created by bacteria. So when soils get very dry, very poor biological components, uh, we'll see this water repellency. So water literally... Um, being repelled off and there is also an insect called pasture mealybug which many of you unfortunately have it makes a waxy coating that contributes to water repellency in our soil okay we also find if you are repeatedly using wetting agents that actually they can lead to water repellency as well so just watch what is it that you're currently using make sure you're monitoring and assessing how water is moving through the cost of not addressing water repellency is that um, 
you may be increasing your irrigation water requirements by 50 to 70 percent. Uh, there's increased potential for runoff and the increased requirements for other inputs. So how do we manage them? We've found that low rates of alkaline type products, so either liquid or fine limes or applications of even milk, and when I say small applications, I'm talking two to four gallons an acre, will help to break those layers up. We also find vermicast or vermiliquid, so these are products that are byproducts of my, um, compost worms, basically, can be really powerful in managing our water repellent um, waxy coatings, in part because vermicast contains some different microbes which eat those hydrophobic coatings. So Pseudomonas florensins, Serratia, and Bacillus species can all break down some of these waxy coatings. So we're using this um, as well as humic acids to help break down that water repellency and enable water to start moving back through the profile. So consider what is it that's been causing water repellency in your particular environment? How do you address that at the root source? And then how do we get biology working so that we have decomposition working and water cycles working as well as they can?